Good morning, boys and girls. It's a nice sunny morning. And uh, the first thing I did here before I decided I was gonna make a video today was I started up the tractor and I unhooked the snowblower. I'm not gonna hook that up again just to show you guys how I took it off of there. But anyway, I'm here behind the shed where we stack a few things. Took the blower off the 6410 and uh, it's gonna be a good day. So maybe I'll run through you, run through a few things with you on what I'm doing here today. So a couple things I'll show you in the yard here. I don't think I've talked about this at all in a video yet, but uh, if you follow me on Facebook or Instagram, you've probably seen some pictures of it and you're aware of it. Some people really wanted to see it in a video. So this is our 9560RT that we traded for. We traded our 9630. Um, that was an articulate tractor on 800 metric duels. This is obviously on tracks. Uh, they're not the 36 inch tracks. Uh, they're 30 inch tracks, which I'm not sure why it had 30s on, but when we talked to them about it, they said we probably wouldn't really notice any difference. Some guys actually like the, the narrower ones better. Um, but this, this tractor will be mainly for tillage. In the spring, we're gonna pull uh, this digger with it. We got a 2210, 55 foot deer digger or uh, uh, field cultivator. And uh, that's what we're gonna pull with it this spring. And a lot of guys wanted to see a video on this, so I'm not sure exactly what you want to see. We can walk up in the cab here. Show you what it looks like in here for those of you that have not seen the inside of a newer deer tractor. Uh, and you've probably, if you've watched my videos, you've seen, seen this before. Most of your controls are down there. So when we get into uh, field work, I'll be doing doing some more stuff inside the cabs here and I'll show you a little bit more about the tractor but but that's what this will be pulling this spring in the in the fall we will be pulling a uh, nine shank uh, John Deere deep tillage or deep ripper and um, I can show you that too because we actually just got a new ripper so I can walk down and show you guys that also batteries dead the next thing I'm gonna work on today and uh, I'm not gonna get it done today because I'm the only one around here and I'm certainly not gonna attempt it myself, but we did get some uh, duels for our sprayer. Um, I don't think I've got any video of it yet, I might, but we bought a Deer 4830 sprayer um, instead of uh, the, the top air that we were pulling before. Um, now we've got a, a Deer self-propelled sprayer. It's a few years old, but it's fairly new. Um, we got some duels here for this spring to put down our pre-emerge with. We don't like leaving big ruts in the field. Um, and we decided to uh, just put a set of duels on the back. We got 420s. We actually got 420s all the way around it, a um, little bit wider tire because we're on 30 inch rows. We've got heavier soils and we don't like leaving ruts. So we went a little bit wider on our tires. A lot of guys will run uh, 380s on there, on those sprayers, but we went with the 420s. So we're gonna wrestle these things onto it sometime this week, I hope. And uh, I'll show you guys, we didn't have a jack when it came to uh, trying to figure out how we we're gonna get those duels on there. We don't have a jack that's gonna handle that sprayer, or we didn't. Uh, now, hopefully we have one. We actually talked to a few guys on, on what to look at for jacks, and we ended up buying a pretty nice jack. So I am gonna put that together today. I'm kinda pumped about that, because now we're gonna have a really nice jack around here. But uh, it's an Emerson, Emerson jack with the extensions here, and it is heavy, so I'm not gonna, I'm not just going to pick it up out of that box for you guys because it's uh, a couple hundred pounds. Maybe not quite that much, but, but it's heavy anyway. It's a um, Model 220, I see, from looking at the book now. So that's another thing I'll be working on. We got this one in here just doing some maintenance on it, checking all the levels and the fluids and everything. Uh, we did have one hydraulic coupler in the back that was leaking pretty bad, so we pulled that out pulled it out of there we'll put a kit in there and kind of rebuild that get that back in there we got the rock picker in here we went through this didn't polish it but uh, we went through it made sure it was good to go um, you can see we've taken some delivery of seed some of that's been here a few weeks already there's the sprayer there it's a deer 4830 I will show you a lot more about this once we get going I'm gonna leave it here for right now but Give you guys a little bit better look at it. If 
For those of you who have run these, you know how nice these self-propelleds are. They're a pretty, pretty handy deal. I've never run one with the boom on the front like a Hagee, um, but that's gotta be nice too, having that boom up front. This here, this is our water trailer. You saw this last year also. We are gonna work on putting in a couple more inductors here and kind of replumbing some of this because we, um, we're gonna have about uh, a third of our acres this year or a third of our soybeans are gonna be extend. So we are gonna use some uh, dicamba beans and see how that works out this year just for a little bit better weed control. For those of you who don't know, uh, extend beans are a dicamba resistant soybean that will help us to control weeds a lot better. Um, it's pretty, it'd be, it'd be, it's different technology, it's different science, but um, the theory is the, kind of the same as uh, Roundup Ready soybeans. When those first came out, you could spray Roundup on and you'd do a really effective job of killing a lot of the weeds. And that's the idea with the dicamba. Hopefully we'll be able to use that dicamba and kill off all these weeds that have kind of started to become a little bit resistant to Roundup. Up here in West Central Minnesota, we don't have a ton of weeds that are uh, Roundup resistant yet, but there is uh, two or three different species that have become pretty resistant. So it'll be nice to try to control those. Uh, the reason we're only doing a third of our acres with the dicamba beans is because, uh, you know, it's kind of a, it's a new thing. It's not proven yet. We haven't grown any yet. Uh, you, we were legally allowed to grow them last year, but you weren't allowed to spray dicamba on them so that most of the guys that grew them last year were growing them as, as seed beans. Um, instead of taking them to the elevator, they were taking them to the seed companies, and those are the beans that we'll be planting this year now. So we'll see how that goes. But anyway, that's uh, kind of what we're doing with the water trailer there. We're going to be adding some plumbing to that for those reasons. My dog got a hold of one of our extension cords. And uh, yeah, it was plugged in when she did that. So she's lucky. But uh, anyway, I'm going to put a new ugly orange end on our fancy yellow extension cord. Ugly but functional. Just had the local deer manager come out and drop off our uh, our monitors and our globes. These are for the uh, for running the auto steer and the GPS and keeping track of all the data. So when we're planting, I will show you guys that again. That's in uh, last year's videos, but I'll show it to you guys again. But this planter basically runs uh, a, a good chunk of what the machines are doing out there. So as far as the technology goes and keeping the data. Uh, that's all run by these monitors inside the tractors. Um, and uh, we have to take these in every year, at least once a year, to get them updated. Just like your computers or your phones, they go through updates, they make changes to the software. So uh, we got these back now, and I'll be putting these in the tractors later today. Battery's dead. I'm out here now, standing out in a field that's kind of behind the yard here, uh, and we've got a ditch. This ditch runs through three quarters that we farm. Actually four, it runs through a rented one as well. Um, and this is a ditch that was a natural low spot and was cleaned out and dug uh, probably a hundred years ago by my great grandpa. And um, it, drains, it drains quite a bit of area through the field. Um, and what we're gonna have to do here now because of uh, Governor Dayton's new legislation is we're gonna have to come in and put some 30-foot uh, buffer strips in here. Uh, they need to average 30 feet. So what we're going to do is measure this out, and we're going to come in here and dig this as soon as it's dry enough to get in here, and we're going to plant um, plant hay on it, hay and uh, wheat for the first year for a cover crop. Um, in my opinion, I mean, we can, we can get into it for quite a while, and I'm not saying that uh, ditches shouldn't have any buffer at all. Um, because I do think it's good to have some grass along the edges of the ditches. Um, but I think uh, what Dayton did uh, and the issue we're, we're having now in Minnesota, I kind of think that's uh, just a regulatory overreach and uh, kind of a stretch there. I think, I, I think it boils down to uh, they're, they're taking land away from us for pheasant habitat because the pheasant hunters want it. Uh, so we're probably not going to allow pheasant hunters to come out here and, and hunt on this land anymore. This ditch does have several acres, several spots where where it widens out and there is a lot of good pheasant land. So I'll go out there and I'll hunt those areas. Um, that's been in CRP for quite a few years now, those those big grassy areas. Um, but 
that's kind of what I'm looking at right now is looking at this ditch and it's probably going to take uh, I would say 15 acres 10 to 15 acres out of production for us that um, that will have cost into seeding and we'll still be paying real estate taxes on all that um, and we are we are hoping to get a little bit of money from the hay but we're gonna have to hire all that custom done because we don't have any livestock and we don't do any hay ourselves so that's one thing anyway that I'm doing now just kind of a quick note on that and how I feel about that but I'm taking a look at that a couple other things about this stream that I thought I should mention this was put on the protected waters map um, years ago when we were kind of told that that was just an inventory for the state and it wasn't going to mean a whole lot uh, which means that now uh, they're able to kind of take advantage of that because they're saying all the public waterways need to have these buffers on them uh, so they're taking advantage of those waters and doing what they can because they're listed as a public waterway this is technically a dnr protected stream even though it flows water uh three or four months out of the year this is spring melt in uh, minnesota so this maybe would have been more full two three weeks ago but not a whole lot it never really gets more full than this and it actually stands dry um, probably at least six months out of the year. The other thing is that we actually had approval uh, a few years ago for, for a, a large stretch of it to actually tile it. We were going to be able to go in and put tile in under the ground and, and cover it up and not have a stream here at all. So I sure wish we'd have done that when we had approval to do it because now we've got to spend the money to put buffers on that and, uh, and continue paying taxes on it where before it could have been... Uh, you know a profitable part of the farm for us um, this area we wouldn't wouldn't have tiled this goes into that big CRP area that I was talking about um, but in the spots where it's just cutting through the field you know we could just well cover that up because there's no habitat there anyway that we'd be destroying so I sure wish we would have taken advantage of that when we could have but unfortunately now we've got to put these buffers on the on the whole thing well it's kind of turned into another uh, musical machinery day I got this jack all together here, um, but it didn't come with a valve to run the air. So if I plug it in, it just starts going up right away. So I called the company. They're going to send me a valve for that. We got the extensions here. I did get uh, everything out of the shed here. I kind of got a mess in the yard, but I'll show you the sprayer. So you can see why we're going to be putting duels on the back of here, and we've got to jack this thing up. You can see why we needed a jack. Um, I guess there's supposed to be a tool up here comes on there that that helps you jack these things up but it didn't come with this one so we've got those extensions we'll use them in here somehow figure it out when we get to it but uh, that'll be that'll be another thing so I got the um, GPS is in you can see there if I get it out of the Sun there's the globe up on top and the screen is inside the cab I won't turn it on right now but there's the screen right there mounted in the cab. I'm going to go over to the other shed over there and go get the planter out. Put the screen in that and maybe start looking at the planter, putting some plates in, that kind of stuff. Maybe I can show you guys in another video a little bit more about how that works. So I'm going to head over and get that in the shed. Well, I finally got the shed all stacked up. Now that it's the end of the day, you can see we got plenty of room here. To work on those duels hopefully we'll get to that later this week and get those on there i'm hoping i'm hoping uh, we're going to get delivery of some more seed we got the planter in here not a lot of extra room front to back we got about a foot on each end to squeeze this thing in here um, but we'll go to work on this get this thing ready to go and maybe i'll have another video for you guys later this week it's the end of the day here i got to get my niece up to parent teacher conferences my wife's got the other kids up at swimming lessons so it's the end of the day here and I got to take off, but uh, I appreciate you watching. Check me out on Facebook and Instagram as well.